Here we go. On Previously on. X Force, Joe, thank you for being here. Like Dead Eye, Blitz, uh, and X Force asks, "Good, I'm change. doing good. How are you? I'm doing good too, X Force. Thanks for being here, dude." The time has come, Brian. Uh, Dead Eye says, "No, I don't want to." <laughs> the ego, Joe. Nice. <laughs> um, now I believe Dead Eye, since you're here, that TwitchCon is coming up, and I. Since I just started this new job, I haven't really been given the okay on having certain days off, but I typically have a weekend day off. So I think with my next check, if it's big enough, I think I might buy a one-day ticket to TwitchCon. I don't know which day yet, but I'll let you know. Um, and I'll let you know if I have the money. I think I can afford it, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, but I'll keep an eye out. By next Friday, I, I should have an answer for you. Um, you said to let you know, so I just said no. Oh, I see. <laughs> Gotcha. Episode 8, all on the line. Si, senor, dead I says. <laughs> yes, I will keep you posted, dude. Immediate containment is imperative. Far too much is at stake here. Hmm. One seventeen a.m. That's an hour before Joe right now. Joe's at like 2.22 a.m. No over his time. It's a lost cause, Director O'Brien. Feel free to cut the bullshit, Morgan. You're playing with fire again. But and you time, might get burned. You'll get burned. Oh, Jesus. He Those actually did. can only exacerbate the situation. Think twice, Director. Or you may regret it. Uh, Okie dokie. You never disappoint, Morgan. But once uh, we have the truth, ten four zero, and I will be there. Never Sweet. Be Joe and I live in the same time zone. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, yeah, Joe's up late because he's he's working on a cosplay for his wife, and they're going to go to New York Comic Con tomorrow. I'm so jealous. Um, but Joe, thank you for posting pictures, man. Me and Jomily have been living vicariously through your Instagram account <laughs> this weekend. Oh, jeez. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Great. All right. Here we go. Swimmy, swimmy gumdrops. Where'd the water come from? If if that. Okay. Whatever. What's that? More magnum bullets. Or we can hold more magnum bullets, I should say. Okay. Oh, what are you? Thank you. Ah, dang. Drowned again. <laughs> oh, do we? I'm not getting a response. Why would you? Whoa, jeez. Handprint. Nice. out of order. Of course it is. Ah, poopy. Wait, why does that have nothing on it? Crap. Damage. Stopping power. That's one heck of a handgun now.
Oh. Great. We'll just swim everywhere. Since you love swimming so much, Jill Valentine. Oh, crap. Let's get some air. That's probably the way we gotta go, but before I do that, let's uh, swimmy swim to the bottoms. Door unlocked. Wait, this is the way to go? Well, then we, we gotta go back for that ladder. I must know what's up at the top of that ladder. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome. There's seven people in here. I appreciate you all watching the show tonight. Uh, if you want to talk anything Resident Evil, feel free to jump in. DC Comics, how was your week? Are you happy it's the weekend? Trick question. I'm sure you are. But to some of you, it may not even matter. Don't we? Let's swim through the fields and look for an exit. All right. I guess Chris was the one with the trident key. And he's on the other boat. You know? All right. Come this on. Is Chris. Hey, Joe, what up? Listen carefully. The ship is done for. But we can't allow the virus to contaminate the oceans. Jessica yeah. and I are heading for the Queen Zenobia. Just hang on. We'll contact you soon. Dude, don't even bother coming here. Yeah, what are you even coming here for, dude? What? Oh. Oh, look, stairs that I can swim down. Oh, you know what? Oh, shoot. There we go. Yeah. Suck it, Trebek. I want this. That thing's been glaring at me for a while. And that too. Can we go this way again? No. There we go. Whew. Thank goodness that still worked. Alright everyone, grab your brown pants. Because I'm sure we're going to be shitting. I said that with such conviction, like I know. Like, I know poop is in our future. Which I do. I mean, come on, guys. Everybody poops. There's the other one. We... I... I need to breathe. Here we go. Oof. I was thinking I shouldn't have skipped that last area. I was like, oh, I'm going to drown now. Do or or do we all? <laughs> I f Dead eye, I forgot. You don't poop. Oh, what up? Oh, man. I hope I kicked you really hard. That I thinks about pooping, and then he never does. No. 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 Wes <laughs> swam right into him.
where the uh There's supposed to be two doors around here. Oh, you son of a biscuit. Dang it. Swim little swim little legs. Oh good. Hurry, he's coming. It's coming. Alright. Chris, are you two alright? Uh yeah, no thanks yes, to you. We're fine, but the ship is sinking fast. We're approaching the Queen Zenobia now. Rendezvous with the ship's hall. Roger, we'll be waiting. Don't tell me what to do. Okay, see you soon. Chris out. <laughs> Alright, head for the hall. Fine, tell me what to do. Because I was kinda wondering where I had to go from here. Right, we're swimming. Ah, great. Uh, those things are ugly, and I hate them, and I don't want them, and I just want to go home. Oh, we're going through the casino. I was like, I don't recognize this area, and I'm like, oh wait, yes I do. Damage three, damage four. Wow, we got a lot of good parts. Let's put a let's put a damage four on this uh, magnum and a damage three. No, we can't do both. <laughs> that would be awesome. But we can put one on there. Nice. Gonna burn some muscle. Anybody know that line from Street Fighter Two V? They end every episode, they go, See you next time on Street Fighter 2V. Gonna burn some muscle. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite send-offs ever. There. Oh, it's gas mask. Oh, excuse me. Veltro, you almost missed the party. So it's weird, because when we saw Veltro on the TV... It was like an old man, and he was wearing the gas mask, but he didn't have the protective headgear, like the black headgear like that guy has. So I'm wondering if they're like, I, th I, I want to say I know the answer to this, but I'm wondering if they're two different people or if there's two different gas mask people. I'm sure because so, we talked about this in a previous episode too, how there were a couple different ideas juggled around with this game and Resident Evil 4 and some recycled ideas they were going to do and that Veltro, like there was hints or maybe talks at one point and maybe making them hunk and like a runaway group from Umbrella, like who wants to bring Umbrella back and they're, they're the ones, you know, you know, t like going to all these facilities where all these bioweapons were bought and they're like breaking them out and they're using them as weapons or something like that. And I think all that just got kept getting scrapped. Um, but I know a lot of us who like like the lore of Resident Evil would have loved to have seen something like that and would have loved a game where Hunk was like the main villain. But I mean, I think it, I think what Capcom does is they just don't commit to to that. Like they were just like, all right, we made Hunk. He was a cool side game. He his mission was just to bring the G virus out, and that's it. Like he's not a character in this universe beyond that. Although they do reference him in Code Veronica as like um, someone who trained at Rockford Island. And who like you find his journal of like how he trained there and you're like okay like that's probably the extent of the character and i think capcom was like all right we can't kind of be fanboys ourselves and write the story this way we have to we have to introduce new characters new concepts and stuff but i don't know i could see the argument either way i could say if i was put in that position it would be really hard for me not to write a hunk is the bad guy story but um I can kind of see why they didn't, I guess. Whoa. Stay sharp. There's something out there. Yeah. Watch your leg. <laughs> Here we go. It's like Resident Evil 5 style. Whoa. Not 
think the first time aquatic creatures were introduced in Resident Evil was actually, um, I mean, we had the shark, obviously, in Resident Evil 1. But, uh, oh, dang, we need to heal big time. Uh, there was a book called Caliban Cove, one of the novels, and there was, like, these T-virus monsters that were, um, aquatic, and they were called the, um, the Leviathans, I think. You don't. Go. Big finish, I'm sure. All right, made it. Men should never fight squirrels, they always go for the nuts. <laughs> Well said, X Force. Well said. We need a good spot to board the Zenobia. Whew. We did it. I typically hate missions like that. Um because I don't feel like I'm in a ton of control, and you guys know me, my aim sucks, so it's like board from here. Jessica, we I'm glad we made it through. Let's go. Great. Yeah, stop. Cruise, just the two of us. Jerking your leg off? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what she's just stretching. Yeah, she's stretching. It's innocent, Seek. You stopped the Rigia Solis. Yeah. Now I will reveal what I know. Everything about the Queen Zenobia. Yeah, I was gonna say he, he was gonna die. He would have died too. What secrets? Consider this. First, why consider this flashback. To find the Queen Zenobia. Good How point. Was it able to float around the Mediterranean undetected? Also, good point. Magic. Second, why did all traces of Veltro vanish after the Terragrigia panic? Why don't you tell us, huh? huh? And third, why is someone trying to use the Regia Solus to destroy the Zenobia? The answer to those questions will lead you to an inconvenient truth. You were to have found it, and that. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I Jessica, guess Jessica and Chris are here. Why did you fire? To protect our people. Isn't that our job? Don't you dare die. Oh, snap. Raymond? What Plot twist. Why? why play the part of Viltro? It's smoke from, <laughs> it's smoke from, from R6S, yeah, from Rainbow Six, yeah. <laughs> smoke, cool. Yeah, it's, it's him. What do you mean? <laughs> Find the truth about Terracretia. What's with all the theatrics, though? Like, it's really, that's the part of this game I can't remember too, too well, was the, the level of theatrics that the characters go through. Um, specifically Raymond there. Yeah, but what's her name? Just came in. She's like, ba blam The guy wasn't even armed. <laughs> she just saw him and she's like, she's like, hey, you look like Hunk from Resident Evil 2. And then she shot him. I'm sure that was the dialogue. They just cut it, you know, for time. Or they're like, hey, you're Smoke from Rainbow Six. All right, 2.14 a.m. Joe, we're catching up to your time. What a terrible loss. Easy there, grabbies. The ship doesn't have much longer. We can't let this virus contaminate the sea. 
Also true. We've already searched the Queen Samiramis. So I think and there's already, but there's back. already sea creatures We're that are infected. Now. Like, all right, I'll try to find a way to delay this. See, that's weird. You know, it's like. Jessica, you with me? Yeah. Where? A little friendly partner swapping should keep us on our toes. Roger that. We'll take care of the virus. Chris and Jill reunited. Sweet. Which one do we play as, though? Anywhere, even underwater, should slow those things down. Thanks, Chris. Also, I've marked off all the possible locations for the lab. He never got the hint. What a drag. Maybe he's already taken, Jessica. Ooh. I always did feel like maybe there was something between Chris and Jill. We were, I think we read this, right? Scribbled memo? Yeah, we read that already. So this was all Raymond's doing? No. I think we've only heard half the story. There's a lot about this mission that doesn't make sense yet. I think we're gonna go for a swim. Boom! Whoa. Did I not... Oh, maybe I did get it. I thought I hit... I was hitting our uh, right bumper, but... Uh, you'll never catch up. Never! <laughs> Man, Joe, I thought you were going to pull the old Y2J quote. It's the booty. <laughs> it's that booty. I got that booty sweat. I got that booty sweat. I got that booty sweat dripping on down to the flow. He's got that booty sweat. Anybody a fan of Tropic Thunder? Hey, little one. Come here. Oh. There we go. How many of those do we have? Infinite. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, isn't there a, a door around here with a... With the key card? And it looks like there is. Um, yes. There we go. I was going to say, I saw something back here. Chris was in the dang way. Uh, I seen it once. I just remember, what do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? I know, I love that that scene. I think it's on Netflix now, uh, Tropic Thunder. It's it's worth a rewatch, I'll say that. I guess we just have infinite amount of those bombs, so now that I know that, I'll just use those. Oh, who's that? You guys saw that, right? You saw someone swimming? Oh shit, what the fuck? <laughs> Sorry about my language, but how did Chris get up here? I'm looking around, I don't see anything. Yeah, I thought Chris was, like, behind us, man. That was crazy. I was like, whoa, there's some dude in here swimming. Just old Chris. Oh, yeah, he's got the uh, trident key. So I guess they made matching keys for the boats. Jill, try using this. Here, Jill. You're the master of unlocking. Use this key. The ships are exactly the same. So you can use it, Chris. It's fine. Chris, you're such an SJW. <laughs> Not only can he punch boulders, but he has magic now. <laughs> yeah, he can teleport. Uh, Joe, after work, you failed. All of us uh, wrestling fans, you should have said, you will never, ever catch up to my time. 
I don't know what that means, but I tried to read that in a wrestling kind of voice. The best I could. Pulse grenade. Oh. Hi, room. Yes. Fingerprint registration complete. Sweet. Uh, damn, X Force fail. <laughs> All right. I guess we done did that. What's this say? Researching the deep sea virus. Uh, Montpelier. Marine University conducted research via unmanned submersible during the fourth expedition to the Kermadec Trench. At 9,000 meters, a new type of super deep sea predatory fish was discovered. The deep seas have a unique effect on living organisms, but this creature, in addition to the visual tolerance to high pressures, displays an unbelievable degree of motility and a ferocity, a ferocity not usually found at such depths. What surprised us after examining the fish was that these unique traits were not native to the fish's biology, but were caused by a viral infection. Well, I wonder if it's the jaguar shark from Steve Zissou. Um, owing to the unfathomable nature of this virus, we decided to give it the name The Abyss. We will continue to research it. We must find out why it takes the large fat and water reserves of deep sea fish, which are suited to the high pressure, low oxygen, low temperature depths, and turns them into high density bone and muscle structures that are not usually found in organisms who live in deep water habitats. If we can successfully develop a working BOW, we will have moved research in this field light years ahead. It is important to note blood transmissions of the virus happens in 99.76% of all cases to date. In rare cases, some test subjects do not become infected if they take the virus orally, perhaps because it is diluted. We will do all we can to improve the effectiveness of this virus and redouble our efforts. The rest of the paper is faded and illegible. I just don't even understand after like the Spencer Mansion and maybe even the G virus makes sense because it was like a rogue scientist, William Birkin, like developing it. And when Umbrella come to came to take it, he like, you know, it got loose. But everything after that, I'm like, why would you keep developing viruses? It Umbrella is the most single minded, stupid organization ever. Like, that's why I was kind of glad they went away. I was hoping Resident Evil 4 would be their downfall. And I hated that it, the game opened and it was like, oh, Umbrella's gone. Their stock price has faded and now they're just gone. It's like, okay, that's so boring and uninteresting. I want Chris and Jill to run into that mansion with Leon and Claire and shoot, you know, like uh, Wesker and, 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 and beat up Oswald E. Spencer. And I want Oswald E. Spencer to turn into a giant monster. It was like, I don't know. I wanted all of that and we didn't get it. Um, but yeah, I, just, I don't understand the constant development of these viruses. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Oh. Oh, there's an other. This must be in other rooms. Okay. Now we can fingerprint. Um, Seek was pretty close with that uh, Jericho impersonation. Oh, was it? What did I do? Okay. Chris doesn't know how to unlock doors. Confirmed. <laughs> That's exactly what I wish would have happened. Um, yeah, I just, I was like, oh, let's just try to sound like a wrestler. I think, I feel like wrestlers, like, uh, they're like superheroes. Like, I heard Phil Lamar once, who uh, is a very funny comedian and voice actor. He does the voice of John Stewart, Green Lantern, my favorite Green Lantern. Um, hold on one second. Scarmiglione Development document. Scarmiglion is a BOW that utilizes the well-suited DNA of a shark. The genetic makeup of sharks has changed very little during their history as predators for millions of years, and the use of that DNA provides the fierce aggression in these weapons. The Scarmiglion's form and color resemble that of its shark ancestors, and its spine appendages resemble lances. The spines are a characteristic of cartilaginous fish. They form when an area of a plasoid Scales mutate and combine with hardened muscle fiber. This allows the creatures to use piercing attacks and move with as much agility as a land animal. On top of this, the scales are as strong as an armored car, far surpassing the scale of a normal shark. This gives them unparalleled frontal defense. Wow. Um, 
Anyway, so Phil Lamar once said uh, when he does the voice of Green Lantern, he speaks from his chest. He like, it comes out and it booms from your chest and you talk through your chest and uh, helps you project, I guess. Um, so uh, I just imagine that's what wrestlers must do, especially since they have such broad chests. I think that's what Phil Lamar said. He saw the drawing of Green Lantern and how he had this big broad chest and he was like oh that guy he must project his voice you know what is happening I'm gonna get the magnum out just because I hate whoa shut up what are you dude Are you? Ow. Whew. The defeat of Skrmilia. I got some kind of achievement for killing that thing. It's okay. I'm fine. Thankfully, I'm fine. Dude, are you kidding me? Oh, what's that? Oh, that's this thing we scanned through the wall. Cool. Um, why make an awesome ending to a stupid corporation when they can make it disappear into thin air? <laughs> Do you know what? Good point. Good point, X-Force. I've seen Phil Lamar. He was on the UK version of Whose Line Is Anyway? Yes, yes. He's a great comedian. Does a lot of Whose Line stuff with uh, Ryan Stiles and those guys. Greg Proops. He used to be on Mad TV. That's when I first saw him. Well, I guess I technically first saw him in, um, in a movie called Pulp Fiction. He plays like a very small part in it. I didn't realize it was him until fiction called Gump Fiction, like Forrest Gump. Um, whoa. Can we carry four weapons now? One, two, three, four. Son of a biscuit. Oh, and it's the L-Hawk too, that's dope. Nope. I must have switched it for the Yep, it looks like the handgun is gone. Where'd the handgun go? Oh, here it is. Let's do this. Let's pick up. There we go. We'll leave the other magnum. Oh, but the other magnum has... Ooh, okay. Elhawk, you're awesome. You have more ammo in you. But I need to take... Nah, we'll, we'll take the Elhawk. Because what... What I'll do, what I'll do is when we get to one of the inventory chests, I'll the old magnum should be there, and I'll be able to pull the damage thing off of it and move it to the Elhawk. That's what we'll do. Uh, mm, biscuit. <laughs> um, yeah, Philomar. Yeah, so he's yeah he's awesome. But uh, I liked him on Mad TV. So when he did the voice of Green Lantern, I was like really excited. He also does the voice of Aquaman on Young Justice, um, which is cool. He's got a great Aquaman I voice. These facilities on a cruise ship. It makes a good cover. Who would ever suspect it? Good point. I hope we can find out what the hell's going on. Yes. Give me that pill. Dang. So this thing wasn't locked? <laughs> This is the secret of Zenobia. I like how the little tiny door to get here locked with a special key that you had to get on another boat. But this, this room, yeah, just push your way in. <laughs> anyway, all right, that is the end of episode eight. Holy crap. Thank you all for watching another short episode. But that's cool. We'll save episode 9 and 10 for tomorrow. Um, I want to not get some sleep because I've been sleeping since I got home from work. But I do want to finish editing a couple videos. Maybe get something up on YouTube before I go to bed. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you being here if you're watching later on YouTube or the re-upload on Twitch. Thank you. Please hit like, follow, all that good stuff. And I will see you all in the future. Peace.